Hey everyone, Brian Lagunas here, and today I'm going to answer another tech question. If you have a tech question you'd like to have answered, be sure to subscribe to my channel, like this video, leave a comment below with your question, and I may just answer it in my next video. This question comes from a comment in one of my latest videos on how I show you how to report progress using async await and .NET Core 3. You can watch that video right here if you haven't seen it already. This question comes from Julian Turner. He asked, Brian, can you please teach us how to copy a lot of files with subdirectories without blocking the UI? Thanks in advance. You bet your ass I can, and I'm gonna show you how to do it right now. Roll that intro. The application we'll be working with today is a very simple WPF.NET Core 3 application. As you can see, our application is a very simple window that contains a button and a text block. When we click the button, we want to copy some files. The text block will be used to notify us when the copy operation has completed. The files we will be copying are available in our Solution Explorer. As you can see, we have a copy this folder, and in this folder we have a number of files and a subdirectory which also contains files. In this case, as an example, I set all of these build outputs in the properties to copy to output directory copy if newer. What this does is if I open this in the file explorer and navigate to my bin debug.net core 3.1 app, we can see that these files have been copied on disk. So this is going to be the location in which we'll be copying these files. Let's go ahead and jump into our code behind and start implementing our logic. The first thing we need to do is determine where the source and target of these copy operations will exist. So let's create a new variable. We'll call it the source directory path, and we will use path.combine of the environment.current directory and the name of the directory, which is copy this. Now let's go ahead and what we want to do is we want to create a source directory info using this path. Now that we have our source directory, we need to have our target directory. So let's create another variable for our target directory path. In this case, we'll call it copy destination. Let's create a variable for a target directory info. We'll set it to an instance of a new directory info, passing in the target directory path. Now that we have determined our source directory and our target directory, let's actually start implementing the copy logic. In this case, before we do any copying, I wanna set the text block in our UI to something that lets us know that the copy process has started. So maybe we just say copying files, dot, dot, dot. Next, we're going to implement our logic to actually copy our file. So we'll just call this, I don't know, copy files looks good to me. Let's go ahead and stub this out. We'll generate that method. And then after the fact, we will set the text of the text block equal to something like uh, copy completed. Now let's go ahead and implement the copy files logic. Obviously, we're going to need our source and target directories. So let's add our directory info for our source and then another directory info for our target. And the first thing we wanna do is we want to create the target directory. So let's go ahead and say directory.create directory. And in this case, it's going to be the target.full name. Once we have the directory, what we want to do now is we're going to have to loop through all the files in this directory. So let's say for each var file in source.get files, as we loop through here, uh, we're going to perform the actual copy operation. So we can say file, copy to. Here we want to provide the destination path, which is going to be path.combine. This is going to be the target.full name. And we want to combine that with the file.name. You can also provide an option here to say, if the file already exists in this location, do you want to overwrite it? For fun, we'll say true. Now this is going to go pretty quick. So I'm just going to throw in a thread.sleep for about 50 seconds, just to kind of emulate a longer running process. Handling the files is pretty easy, right? We just loop through all the files with the directory and we're done. Uh, but what about the subdirectories? You don't know how many subdirectories a directory may have. Uh, so we're gonna have to write some recursive code here. Let's start by first, we're going to do a for each and we're gonna go source subdirectory in our source.get directories. So what we're doing, are we're gonna get all the directories that exist within the source directory that we passed in. Now that we have the source subdirectory, once again, I'm going to set a thread.sleep here just to kind of emulate a longer running process. Uh, in this example, it's gonna go very fast. So let's just kind of slow this down just a little bit. Uh, so now I want to create a variable for a target subdirectory. 
And this is going to be equal to the target dot create subdirectory. And we're going to grab the source subdirectory dot name. Because remember, we are copying the source subdirectory to another location. So we're going to create that same name of that subdirectory from the source into the target directory that we just created prior. Now that we have created the subdirectory for the target, we're actually going to do a recursive call now. We're going to call the same copy files. We're going to pass our source subdirectory and our target subdirectory. So this is going to call this method again, and it's gonna loop through the same logic. So for every subdirectory, it's gonna keep going down and down and down until it no longer finds any subdirectories. So now the next step is to actually pass in the source directory info and the target directory info, and let's run the application and see what happens. Here's the application running. I'm going to click copy files. Uh, I don't know what's going on, but my UI is frozen. And that's because right now we're doing all of this copying on the UI thread. Uh, now that the copy has completed, we see our copy completed uh, is displayed to us. And now I can interact with my UI again. This means that we need to move this work to another worker thread. Luckily, this is very easy to do. We're simply going to await task.run and we're going to call our copy files method within the task.run. Let's go ahead and run our application again. We'll go ahead and click the copy files button. And as you can see, the process has begun. We're copying our files, except it's now on a separate worker thread, which keeps our UI responsive. Now the copy has completed. If we'd like, we can go ahead and open up our directory and we can see that the copy destination has been created. There's all the files. And here is the subdirectory in our example as well. So everything worked as expected. We copied a large number of files, directories, and subdirectories in the files in those subdirectories. And we moved that work to another worker thread to keep our UI responsive. 